competence. 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 Hey, Nick. Dad, what's up? Dad, I can't figure this out. How is this going to help me with incompetence? What did you just say? How is it going to help me with incompetence? I don't, I don't get it. Incom the show's on incontinence, Nick. What? I don't get it. Incompetence? Incontinence. Incontinence. I don't, I, I'm, I'm lost. Andrew? Hey guys, Nick Drosos, Dr. Andrew Steinberg, and welcome to another episode of Have the Balls to Talk About It. So we got our guest, Dan. Yes, Dr. Danny's back in the house. Yes. So what are we going to be talking about today, Dan? Something that uh, affects a lot of men and women, which is urinary incontinence or leakage, peeing in the pants. Okay. Um, involuntary loss of urine when either... Um, uh, men or women are doing some sort of stress maneuver, standing up, running, walking, coffee, trampoline, sneezing. coughing, exactly. Or sometimes uh, people also have urge leakage, which is um, have a strong urge to go to the bathroom. They can't make it to the bathroom in time, so they leak uh, while going to the bathroom. So those are the two types of leakage. I'm going to talk about, again, more of the advanced when people have uh, failed conservative medical options. What are the surgical options that we can offer to be yeah, Like everything, like with erectile dysfunction or whatever, we always start a more conservative lifestyle changes, uh, drink less fluids, less caffeine, less alcohol. We send the physiotherapist, pelvic physiotherapist who can help strengthen the muscles. Uh, there are medications that we can use. There are certain techniques that we can use. But in the end, some people fail more conservative management and need to go on to further management. And uh, thank God we have Dr. Danny to... Uh, Help us with those. So, so what do you do with them? How do we break it down? I think we should break it down in terms of a woman or a man. Okay. I think that's uh, the, the, the best thing and, and we can uh, talk about each one. But um, the most common surgical treatment for stress incontinence in a woman is a major urethral sling. Okay. What does that mean? Is uh, with age, weight, loss of hormones, kids, um, the urethra. You can imagine that the, the bladder is my wrist, the urethra is my finger, and healthy young women have that support around the urethra so that when the urethra moves, when they cough, dance, sneeze, uh, the urethra is pressed and compressed and don't leak. But if there's lack of support around the urethra, well, when the urethra moves everything moves so, so that valve that was there before doesn't exist and that's why people are leaking S the uh, most common surgical option for patients female patients with stress incontinence is having a mid urethral sling which is a mesh uh, that so, uh, ports around the urethra in a tension free so there's no tension around the urethra and there is uh, a scar tissue that's formed and what it does it, it creates that hammock that support that was lacking before so that when the uh, when people cough sneeze or dance there's that urethral support there's that valve that's recreated and people don't leak and you know what the most common complication is what? you should have done this five years ago wow that's what the large majority of female patients say this has changed my life. I can go do aerobics now. I can go and jump on the trampoline at the ISO with my kids and not have to change my pads or diapers because that's sometimes how bad it is, right? People have to wear protection so they don't leak on their they jeans or pants sports, or anything. They, uh, is, the same thing for, is it the same thing for men? Good question. So for males, uh, the large majority of stress incontinence, again, when I say incontinence, I mean leakage, and when I mean stress, I mean when you force, okay. move, dance, Because I'm thinking push. stress when people are stressed. No. Stress means when you're stressing the body. Correct. Effort. When you make an effort. When okay. you make an effort. Physical and effort. Up. Exactly. Okay. Uh, for most male uh, incontinence that needs surgery, it's mostly after, sur after surgery for prostate cancer. Okay. So that's, uh, um, that's the difference. Okay. 
and uh, there's many other different types of options as well. So if we're staying uh, with regards to women, uh, a major rethrow sling, and I'll show you an example, okay? So it's a 15 to 20 minute procedure where a woman is put under either regional anesthesia or spinal anesthesia. Uh, they come in the morning of, they leave the same day, um, and it's a, you could feel it, it's mesh, and it stays in the body for the rest of somebody's life. Oh, wow. So what people, kind of material is that? It's a polypropylene mesh. Mm -hmm. um, women have to be done having kids, so it's uh, you have to ask. It's a irreversible thing, and if a woman's going to have uh, vaginal delivery, even a cesarean, they'll pretty much ruin the procedure, and they'll probably be incontinent or le leak afterwards. But it's a 15-minute procedure. It's a small incision in the uh, upper vagina, uh, which is houses with where the urethra is, and uh, the the sling is kind of located like this you can imagine that the urethra is my finger and it kind of just hugs but doesn't put any pressure on it women don't have women can't lift anything very very heavy for about four weeks so we make sure that the mesh uh heals into the right space um and then they're they have a gain of their continence back and then i know there's there's been a lot especially in the states uh with the fda and meshes uh, vaginal meshes for different things and they were recalled and stopping of sales and clash acts and lawsuits. How does that relate to this kind of mesh and in this kind of procedure? Good question. So number one, it's exactly the same mesh that's used in these class action lawsuits. The only difference is the class action lawsuits in the, in the States and worldwide now are mostly for prolapse, which is a type of problem that women have that are not related to incontinence. So it's pelvic organ prolapse. Now we are seeing that there are some class action, class action lawsuits with regards to this type of mesh for women with incontinence. There are, so there are lawyers and there are patients who are having tremendous complications related to this. And they feel that it's absolutely related to this um, and are now suing physicians, wow. surgeons, the actual pharmaceutical company related to this. What's the urologist's position on this? The Quebec Urological Association, Canadian Urological Association, the American uh, Urological Association, Eurogynecological, all these big bodies are saying that you have to counsel people appropriately. Okay. So there is nothing that has a 0% complication yeah, rate. Okay. Complications can be catastrophic. So you can't say that it's going to be uh, rainbows and unicorns yeah. afterwards. It's surgery. And the, you know what I always re I remember that I was at the Mayo Clinic. I was always taught the only minor surgery is surgery done on somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no such thing as yeah. minor surgery. And there's always complications that are related. So there are a very small minority of patients that are extremely unhappy, that are miserable related to this. But we can say to patients that the large majority right. of people who undergo a mid urethral sling, which is, that's what it's called, this mesh for leakage, are incredibly happy. I'm assuming for men it's completely something different, right? Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. So the surgeries that we can do um, is the same kind of um, way that it, again, it's mesh. Oh, wow. Hugging the urethra, the the way that we do it, the indications are so, a little sorry, bit different. Now, this is for men as well, right? This so right here. This, yeah, these are the slings that are available for men. Okay, okay. where well, this is people who have what we call mild to moderate stress incontinence. So what what mild, does that what mean? That's a guy who has to wear less than five pads per day. So you you know, there's the pads that you put under. Mm -hmm. um, inside your underwear yeah. for the leakage. So, so like it sounds mild, but imagine yeah, having to yeah, change a yeah, wet that's pad five it's, times a day. So yeah, it's, it's relative when we use mild see, and moderate. But when you see, like you, call, like you pee, you talk about drops or like literally Good everything. question. That's the severity. Some people have to really force hard and have a couple of uh, drops. That's what we would call mild. Some people just getting up from the chair who just completely oh, empty their bladder. So their life, so that's their so, life is... I mean, it's a huge impact. Wow. You know, these uh, people who, you know, cleanliness is a factor, but they're always smelling of urine, right? Despite how many number of showers that they take per day, wow. because it's they're just... The urine is also very 
damaging to the skin. It can cause chafing and, and redness and irritation. And it can be very uncomfortable, especially for women internally, vaginally. Some people have serious uh, skin issues. Sure. You know, in the vulva and, and uh, for men around the penis, they have the penis, the foreskin. So a little bit, like if you see a little bit of pee on your underwear after you go to the bathroom, people shouldn't be panicking over that, right? <laughs> right. I don't need a sling for that. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Because it happens often, like happens, you hear men talk yeah. about it or you, you know. Right. I think what you're talking about is more dribbling, right? Yeah. The post void yeah. after you pee, the couple of drops that are left. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different story. So that's you know, not something talk, somebody would go see a doctor for. You should if it's bothering okay. You know, well, everything yeah. is about quality of life well, and if it good bothers point. you. Good point. Quality if of it life. bothers you to the point where you're saying, holy crap, man, my underwear is starting to get wet then you go see somebody about yeah. it right if it's a couple of drops once every week once every month that it doesn't bother you then it doesn't bother you right that's I, I think that's interesting too when we talk about all the episodes in the show it's about quality of life some people won't care about you know when we talk about erectile dysfunction some guy might be like yeah that's the way it is I don't care well, well I, I think uh, I think it, uh, hopefully this is going to change I think it's changing a little bit already or a lot in some places that medicine is focused on treating sick people yeah. and not treating patients that are unwell either mentally mm -hmm. or, or or for whatever the reason may be those patients are really pushed aside and uh, especially in in our society in our province where every cent of healthcare dollars is is counted and you know allocated to cancer or cancer or or whatnot it, it ignores some of the daily illnesses that really have a major impact not only major but financially i mean Incontinence alone, I, I've seen the statistics a while ago about how much is spent a year in terms of pads, urinary incontinence pads, and the number was astronomical. Uh, you couldn't believe it. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars a year in the United States spent on people who are incontinent just to protect their underwear. And so, once, once that operation is done, it works immediately? Or? Uh, so it's an incision in between the scrotum and the anus normally. Okay. okay. So the perineum, it's called. Okay. Uh, so patients are put into a gynecological position or like women giving birth type thing where the legs are up in the air. Uh, Even the we, guy, same thing. Yeah, right? exactly. That's yeah, how this we is operate. The guy talking about. Okay. Exactly. So there's an incision uh, in the perineum and these, um, these meshes or slings are put where they hug the urethra. So for example, so this is a uh, mesh that again hugs the urethra to get that support that might be lost after surgery or anything. This is a little bit more advanced. This is called the Atoms sling and you can feel it that there's a cushion here and how it works is again it hugs the urethra. Okay, so it causes that pressure to get, you know, to reestablish that valve or the continence okay. mechanism. And if sometimes uh, there's the people are leaking afterwards, so it's not enough um, as effective as they want. Well, there's a small little cylinder that's put inside the scrotum. Again, you don't see anything. And via this port, you can take a syringe, clean the scrotum, do a small little needle poke here, fill this up a little bit more. It goes so through people... the skin into that little uh, diaphragm into that reservoir. And you ex and there's more liquid that goes here, so people are more and more continent. You can explain. You take a needle. So, so you I... don't see anything. Okay. I... You'll feel this small port that's just superficially Where? located in, my in, in, your t in your scrotum. Yes. Okay. And you're going to take a small needle. Okay. Wait, what's a small needle? You're going to take a, a syringe filled with uh, sterile saline and you're going to fill up the balloon a little bit more. Okay. It's done in the office, takes about 30 seconds. Okay. It's uncomfortable, not painful. Once you get over that, it's in the balls, you know, <sighs> you, you can take care Out of it. Out of the balls. To... <laughs> oh. So this is called, this is again, an adjustable thing. Okay. So P, uh, it, it, we, we adjust it depending on how people are doing after surgery. Okay. So again, this is for mild to moderate leakage. Okay. When you're talking about people who are in diapers, you know, you're talking about diapers, adult diapers. Which, you know? which basically means once he, he can't hold his piano. Yeah, if you're talking about people who are over five pads per day. Okay. Uh, or have to wear diapers plus pads plus towels. I mean you know, a tremendous amount of leakage, you're talking about an artificial urinary sphincter, okay. an AUS, that's what it is. Three parts, 
like the uh, penile prosthesis that we were talking about the last episode. And what it is is one is one, the cuff is around the urethra, again through an incision okay. in the perineum in between the scrotum and the anus. There's a pump in the scrotum, and there's a reservoir or a balloon inside the belly, in the abdomen, okay? And there is liquid that is hugging around the urethra at all times, so a person is completely continent after their wow. surgery. And then when they want to have an urge to pee because their bladder is full, they press once, press it, that's how it kind of feels. So you press it once, liquid goes from here around the reservoir uh, around the cuff to the reservoir and the urethra is open person oh, pees like a million bucks and then 90 seconds after it's automatically liquid okay. goes back from the reservoir to the cuff and, and they're uh, caught it's the opposite of the penile one this is always activated and you press that to deactivate it okay. to empty it so this is the gold standard procedure meaning this is what we suggest patients to undergo if they're bothered by severe stress and how long is this operation this is about a two to three hour procedure yeah pratico pragmatically how this works patients come in leave the same day uh they're completely incontinent after their as surgery as soon as it's done it's boom no no, no. they're completely leaking afterwards okay. we don't activate the device because we want everything it's to heal good, yeah. Uh, four to six weeks oh, afterwards, amen. they come to the office, they meet the doctor, they meet the nurse, we show them how to use this. Again, once they're as comfortable as they can be in the office, they leave the office and they use it at home. So there's, uh, it's important that we counsel patients, that we okay. make sure that the patients feel that, you know, they're in the right hands and that um, if there's any complications, they know who to call and what oh, to man, do. Absolutely. Wow. Anything other in the pipeline or other things that can be used less invasively? I know they have injectables for incontinence right. and stuff like that. So um, there's tons of other things that, that can, these are, this is the basic uh, armament that we have from male and female incontinence. And uh, there are much more invasive surgical options for both male and females with really, really bad leakage, with, again, patients who have failed these type of procedures. Uh, but in the pipeline, I mean, there's things that they're trying to reduce the, like, size of these yeah. devices. So have the, the, you know, for a male, for example, have the um, pump and the cough or the, 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 the pump and the reservoir in one uh, so it's less complicated yeah, and stuff like that. Exactly. So there's a lot of things that are going on. Um, but again, the most important thing is you got to counsel people appropriately. There's no minor surgery. This is still significant surgery. This is a foreign body in your body, which is a, you know, can complicate, can get infected. Um, this, the, the internal structures can be hurt. Wow. Um, this is, a device right so yeah, this yeah. has a half-life meaning at a certain point you might have to revise or change these things how long is this good for i mean it's for, for an artificial urinary sphincter nor it's about seven to ten years so every seven ten years they gotta come back and they gotta it. come back to change wow. it and it's a surgery each time wow. sometimes people can go 15 years you know my experience is that it's very much the opposite where you're seeing a healthy guy at 70 who has a surgery at 65 and then boom, they have a stroke or they get, they get diagnosed with Alzheimer's 10 years afterwards. And then again, it may seem simple, you pump and then you pee and then it's go. But sometimes people who lose their ability, right? Yeah. Their cognition, their ability to um, understand their manual dexterity. Um, I'm having also the opposite of where this sometimes this device is, is lasting, but the patients are getting older and older and can't necessarily tolerate it. So sometimes you either have to deactivate the device or you have to remove it for those type of situations wow. too, you know? This is, this is a, a life-changing right. procedure for a majority of patients, but you don't screw around, right? Yeah. This is a... So people who are watching, uh, you know, there's hope for them. There's, you know, they could do something about it. And I'm, must be embarrassing for men as well when they walk into your office for this stuff. Are they? I hope it's empowering. I hope it's empowering. Because again, uh, once they've come through the doors of the clinic, 
they're okay. Right. I'm always concerned about the people who are at home, it, yeah. miserable, saying there's nothing they can yeah, offer. Right. Uh, sometimes friends, family, doctors, or other uh, healthcare professions have said there's nothing that they can do. Are the oh, they're are getting they, old. Are the you urologists, know? I think, uh, sort of brush it aside. Sure. It's wow. not their area of expertise. Sure. And instead wow. of referring to Danny or somebody else, they'll just say, you know, nothing I can do, live with it kind of thing. Yeah, I can just imagine you can't live with something like that and must consume your day. You sure. Know? So, wow. Yeah. So, Danny, thank you for coming back Danny, on again and enlightening us. Thank you so us. much for coming on. Pleasure. We'll definitely have you back uh, again on future episodes. Yeah. And guys have yeah. the, and women have the balls to get help, yeah. have the balls to talk about it. And uh, we'll... Uh, We'll be back with some more interesting episodes. And that's it, guys. So make sure to subscribe, to hit the bell, and leave us in the comment box what are some of the next videos and topics you would like us to talk about. And remember, have the balls to... Talk about it. Danny, you're going to get to punch it. Punch it? Punch it, and then tickle it. <laughs> <laughs>